Hi guys, Jed here. In today's video, we're going to be learning about SIRDs. Stay tuned for the entire video as I'm going to be explaining what a SIRD actually is. I'm then going to give you five examples on how to solve problems that include adding, subtracting, simplifying, multiplying, and dividing SIRDs. At the end of the video, there are going to be some practice questions to test your knowledge and understanding, followed by their answers. If at any stage of this lesson, you feel like you're learning and want to support this channel, leaving a like and subscribing would really make my day. Thank you and let's begin. Okay, so what are SIRDs? SIRDs are irrational roots of numbers. And if that didn't make any sense, keep watching. We first have to ask ourselves, what is an irrational number? Well, simply put, it's a number that cannot be written as a fraction. So think about the number four. The number four is a rational number because you can write it as four over one. That's a fraction. How about 0 0.7 recurring? This number is also a rational number because it can be written as seven over nine. But how about the square root of two? This number is an irrational number as it cannot be written as a fraction. Mathematicians have proven this and the proof is pretty straightforward. And you'll learn about this proof if you take maths A level. So what are the properties of irrational numbers? Well, they're decimal numbers that have no repeating digits and they do not terminate. They go on forever, so it's similar to 0 0.7 recurring. However, irrational numbers are different because they have no repeating values. So remember what I said at the beginning of the video. The square root of 2 is a surd because surds are irrational root of numbers. Okay, now that you know what a surd is, let's go through some examples. So here we have an example of 8 root 6 plus 7 root 6. And... Quite simply, the answer to this is just going to be 15 root 6. You can think of adding surds as adding variables in algebra or adding objects together. You can add surds that have the same number in the root. So in this case, 8 root 6 plus 7 root 6, we can add them together because we're adding the same object, which is root 6. So I have 8 lots of root 6 plus 7 lots of root 6, and of course that will be 15 lots of root 6. You cannot add surds together if you have different numbers in the roots. So let's just check our answer. There it is, pretty straightforward. Now we're going to do a second example with subtraction, and it works in exactly the same way as addition does. So let's just check to see we have the same number in the roots, 3 and 3, so we can go ahead and simplify this. 13 root 3 minus 5 root 3 is going to give us 8 root 3. And if we check our answer, there it is. Now for our third example, we're going to look at how to simplify a third through breaking it down into square numbers. Don't forget your square numbers. You need them in order to be able to access this topic. So I'm going to write some examples of square numbers here. 1 times 1 is 1, so 1 is a square number. 2 times 2 is 4, so 4 is a square number. 3 times 3 is 9, so 9 is a square number, and so on and so forth. And you need to know your square numbers up to 225, which of course we get by doing 15 times 15. So how can we use these square numbers to simplify thirds? Well, take a look at this example here. We're being asked to simplify the square root of 99. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the numbers inside the square root of 99 and break them down into one square number and one non-square number. The largest square number you can think of is usually the best one, as that will fully simplify it. So in this case, I'm going to break 99 down into 9 times 11, which is true. These two values are exactly the same. Now, there's a law of thirds that you need to know, which is this. A number in a root multiplied by another number in a root. So I'm just going to use a and b that can symbolize any number is equal to the square root of both of these numbers multiplied together. And this works in reverse as well. So if we have the square root of two numbers being multiplied together, we can now separate them into two separate roots being multiplied together. And I'm going to use this law here to solve this question. So now we have the square root of 9 times 11, and I'm going to separate these into two separate roots, the square root of 9 multiplied by the square root of 11. And of course, since 9 is a square number, the square root of 9 is 3. And 3 times the square root of 11 can be simplified to give us 3 root 11. And if we check our answer, there it is. So important key points to take away from this 
is that if you're trying to simplify a single third, break down the number through multiplication, separate it into two numbers that are being multiplied, and let one of the numbers be the largest square number you can think of, and then separate the thirds. And the number that was the square number inside the root can be simplified into a whole number. And that's it for this example. I'm going to introduce another example here, and this is going to be division. In the same way that you can break up numbers that are being multiplied in a third, you can also do the same for division. So let's say I have the square root of a divided by b. This can be broken up into two separate thirds, which is equal to the square root of a divided by the square root of b. And of course, this works in reverse as well. If I have the square root of a number being divided by the square root of another number, we can simplify this into one big square root where the numerator number is divided by the denominator number. So let's take a look at this example here. We're being asked to simplify the square root of 55 divided by the square root of 11. We can write this as a single square root and 55 divided by 11. And of course, 55 divided by 11 is 5. So this simplifies to give us the square root of 5. Now, the square root of 5 cannot be broken down any further. Remember, 5 is a prime number, so it only has two factors, 1 and itself. And this should be our final answer. So if we check our answers, there it is. Now let's take a look at our final example where we're multiplying thirds together. So we're going to have the square root of 3 multiplied by the square root of 15. And we've spoken about the law where we can combine these thirds together underneath one square root symbol, and it's going to be 3 times 15. Well, 3 times 15 can be simplified further into the square root of 45. Now you have to ask yourself this question. Can the square root of 45 be simplified any further? And the answer is yes. Think about the largest square number possible that can be multiplied onto another number to give you 45. And it really helps to know your times tables inside out for this. So the number I can see immediately is 9 multiplied by 5. And you see, I've broken down the 45 into 9 multiplied by 5, where 9 is the largest square number that can actually be multiplied onto another number to create 45. So now we can break this down further. I'm going to separate this large square root into two smaller square roots, which is going to be the square root of 9 multiplied by the square root of 5. And of course, the square root of 9, since 9 is a square number, breaks down or simplifies into 3. So we're going to have 3 multiplied by root 5, which can be further simplified by just writing them next to each other. So 3 root 5. And this should be our final answer since it can't be simplified further. So if we check our answer, there it is. And that's it for the examples on thirds. Now I'm going to give you nine practice questions. Definitely attempt them. Try your hardest. Use the laws that we've learned in this lesson to answer those questions. And at the end, I'm going to post the answers so you can see how much you scored out of nine. Leave in the comments below how many questions you got correct. I'd be very interested to know. And that's it for our first lesson on thirds. There are going to be other lessons on thirds, such as multiplying thirds out in brackets and rationalizing thirds. So definitely check out those videos. But guys, thank you for watching. If this lesson was helpful in any way, like I said before, leaving a like and subscribing would really help out. Thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next video.